This is going to be Psalms chapter 3, and we're going to look at how the Lord is mindful of his saints. Psalms 8, 4 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Even though we are nothing and less than a drop in a bucket, God is still mindful of man and his creation. Looking at Psalms 3, let's look at how God is mindful of his saints. And Psalms 3 is a prayer that David prayed when he was fleeing from his son Absalom. That is the historical application. Doctrinally, it is a prayer that saints will pray in the future time of Jacob's trouble. However, we can also get some practical truth for us today. So I want to look at all three of these and see how is God mindful of his saints. Number one, God's mindful of his saints because he stays by their side. Psalms 3, one says, A psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Ever feel like you are alone and everyone is against you? If you are a born-again believer, then you are never alone. Marvel not, marvel not if the world hate you. Remember that it hated Jesus Christ before it hated you. Even though the world is against you, God said in Hebrews thirteen five, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Even when we are out of fellowship with the Lord and he is chastening us, he is still there by our side. I'm in him and he's in me. And even when he lets an enemy rise up against us as a judgment on our sin, he is still there waiting for you to call on him and his name for help. When my daughter gets scared of something, she runs towards me crying and screaming, Daddy, Daddy. And I always enjoy her coming to help me, or, or her coming to me for help. I believe that God enjoys it and loves it when we come to Him, wanting Him to help us, and when we come to Him acknowledging Him, knowing He is the only one who can help us. I believe that kids are important because uh, they sh show us Many times how God looks at us. When my daughter runs at me screaming and crying, that gives me a glimpse of how God sees it. But David, when he is fleeing from Absalom, says, How are they increased that trouble me? A saints in that coming time of Jacob's trouble are going to be in great tribulation. It will be the worst time the world has ever seen. So if you miss the rapture, you are literally in big trouble. And that's why it says, how are they increased that trouble me? You see, verses in the Bible have that historical application. In this case, David fleeing from Absalom. But it also gives us a glimpse in the future about how those time of Jacob's trouble saints, they can look back on this and see how David was kind of going through something just like they were going through. And then we can look at it and get help for our troubles today and the days that we're living in. Psalm 3, 2 says, Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for God, for him in God. Selah. Notice the word Selah. Like Selah Petra. This puts us in that time of Jacob's trouble and second coming setting. The Antichrist henchmen are probably going to mock the time of Jacob's trouble saints and say, Where is your God now? There is no help for him in God. The people who come against Christians today many times scoff at the Bible and the idea of God. And when something bad happens, they say, where is your God now? They say, where is your God when a disaster strikes? And they may not believe there really is a God. And they believe that we're just using him as a crutch. But there is a God in heaven, as Daniel says, and he is our helper. Psalm 60, 10 through 12 says, Wilt not thou, O God which had cast us off, and thou, O God, which didst not go out with our armies, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. And number two, the Lord Jesus Christ shields us from our enemies. Psalms 3, 3 says, But thou art, Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. And Ephesians 6 talks about the shield of faith that will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The Lord is our shield. Every time you pray, you're praying up the shield of God's protection. When you read the Bible, you're getting your shield ready. He is a shield for us. 
Genesis 15, 1 says, After these things the word of the Lord came into Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Psalms 5, 12, For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Psalms 91, 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So he is the shield. And number three, he seeks your supplication. He's mindful of the saints and he seeks supplications from them. Psalms 3, 5, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. Notice that word Selah again. Uh, God is up there waiting on you to talk to him. He loves prayers so much that he keeps them in bottles. Revelation 5, 8 says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So God is mindful of man, and he is waiting on his saints to make supplication. 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Psalms 3, 4, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. God hears you all the way from heaven. That is his holy hill. He is up there on Mount Zion in the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Isaiah fifty seven fifteen For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. So God is up there on his holy hill inhabiting eternity. He looks down on man and sees time like it's on some type of chart or timeline and he can see the end from the beginning. He can go back and look here. He can go back and look there. Or he probably just sees it all at once. But he's up there outside of time and eternity. And the Lord, with all that power, is mindful of his saints that are down here stuck in time. But number four, God is mindful of man and he sustains the saints. Psalms 3, 5 says, I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. Uh, God is so mindful of you that while you're asleep, one single little person asleep in their bed, he sustains them and takes care of them. If you're afraid at night, then memorize this verse. The definition of sustained is upheld or maintained or supported. And when you're down to nothing, God will keep you going. There have been times in my life where if I couldn't read the Bible, I don't know what I would have done. When everything around you is a lie and a deception and a false flag and a rumor and a falsehood, the word is true from the beginning. It is pure words. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And when everything is a lie, the Bible is true. Let God be true, but every man a liar. I can't speak truth unless I get it from God and God lets me speak it. Man in his wicked flesh is so full of lies. But the Lord will sustain you. He'll comfort you. And the Bible calls him the God of all comfort. David said, I laid me down and slept. I awaked. For the Lord sustained me. The only reason you get up in the morning is because God let you get up. The only reason somebody didn't break in and kill you while you were asleep is because God's protective hand was covering you. But number five, he smites your enemies. So he sustains the saints. He smites their enemies. If you're a Christian, then you're going to have enemies. You're going to have enemies bigger and stronger than you are. But if but you have a big brother the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a heavenly Father who made the worlds, and He's a lot bigger than they are. And if the world hate you, you know that it hated Jesus Christ before it hated you. And David says in Psalms 3, 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. The Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. If you fear man, you're going to have a hard time fearing God because you're going to want to please man before you please God. And if we look forward and apply this to the tribulation saints, they're going to have a 200 million man army coming against them. They're going to have all hell breaking loose against them. But why fear ten thousands of people that have set themselves against you round about when the Bible says, If God be for us, who can be against us? Psalms 3, 7 
Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. And this is another prayer for the second coming. If you don't have anything to pray, then pray for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first time he came, they crucified him and they smote him. The next time he comes, he won't have to die for me. He'll be the one smiting the cheekbones of the ungodly. He is going to literally knock their teeth out and smite them in their hinder parts. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Second Thessalonians it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and abating out the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are going to be dead men walking. All their faces are going to be going to gather blackness. They'll be much pained. They'll be hiding in the dens and rocks of the mountains and praying that the rocks fall on them and smash them before the Son of God comes and slashes them with the two-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth and he comes through and threshes the heathen in his anger. Jesus Christ is coming back and boy is he mad as they say. So you need to be on the right side. If you're not saved, then you're not on the Lord's side, you're on the devil's side. Psalms 3 eight says, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people, Selah. Thy people is referring to Israel. Israel is wicked today, and they're going to go to hell if they don't be, get saved. But Israel as a nation is beloved. And there is going to be a remnant of believing Jews. They are going to be right with God, and they are going to get their land in the millennium. The day the Jews are enemies of the gospel, but they are beloved enemies, according to Paul in Romans chapter 11. And notice again the word Selah, which put us in that time of Jacob's trouble and second coming setting. So we could apply this these verses to a prayer a saint would pray in the time of Jacob's trouble. We can look back and see how David said it when he was fleeing from Absalom. And then we can get all kinds of truth to help us out today. The Bible is an amazing book. You can look at it from so different many different angles and it's written such a way that any person in any age can open it up and get something for them and learn something and get comfort from it but this has been psalms chapter 3